Thanks so much Halima and Sarah, thanks so much for subscribing to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more regular uploads and your chance to be included in shoutouts for future videos. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be doing something a little different, uh, and I've been playing around with making room sprays and I'm actually really enjoying making them and um, I've got the idea I like to make them from my sister because she wants to kind of make um, them and start selling them. Just a side thing, you know, like at markets and online as well. So I thought, oh yeah. So she asked if I could make it and um, I'm like, yeah, you know, because I haven't really made room sprays before and I have no experience in making them whatsoever. Um, so at first I was a little, uh, you know, but <coughs> It turned out really nice that um, I'm glad I actually started to make them because now mum wants some and if you know everyone seems to be wanting some now so <laughs> maybe I will actually start making them and um, uh, sell them as well so today um, this is just a recipe I kind of you know came up with myself, you know, and also reading other places and like percentages, you know, like, and of course supplies as well, and they give um, how much to use. So I am using polysorbate 80 and a fragrance oil. And yes, I know they are not natural, but this was not for me, for my range. And uh, this was requested obviously by my sister and now my mum. So, I was happy to use um, polysorbate 80. I'm just drying this because I sanitized, I washed and sanitized them. So I'm just um, making sure that it's nice and dry. I'm using this to mix it in. And um, I'm using polysorbate 80 to solubilize the fragrance oil because as you know, oil and water does not mix as well you know, as with alcohol. They just do not mix, so you'll see the oil float to the top. And if you put it in a spray bottle, you have to shake it and um, for it to kind of mix temporarily before it starts to separate again slowly. But the solubilizer slash, you know, emulsifying action um, makes the oil and water uh, bind. So um, I thought I'll give polysorbate 80 a try. And usually the polysorbate 20 is used. But my thought behind it was if I used 80, because 80 is a lot stronger, so 80 is designed for emulsifying water in oil. So, for example, if you were making a balm, for example, just to give you know a rough idea so you know the differences. And of course, as you know, balms are oil based or and wax as well to make it hard. And wax are considered waxes are still considered oil in a sense. Um, so you use polysorbate 80 when you're introducing a little bit of water into a largely oil-based product and polysorbate 20 is when you're introducing um, a little bit of oil so essential oils and you know fragrance oils into mostly liquid water and um or alcohol mix and you just want to disperse that in there but um, usually you do one to one ratio of polysorbate 20 to fragrance but of course, since the polysorbate 80 is a lot stronger, maybe if I use half the amount, then I get the same results. So I have been actually having very good um, success with it. Uh, and of course, every fragrance is different. I haven't actually tested this fragrance before as a room spray. I made candles with it for my sister. This is from Aroma. It's called Australian Bush. Hmm. 
and it's so nice and it's just going to be beautiful for a room spray. So one thing I will say is for room sprays, this has a body safe limit of 5%. So I'm comfortable doing the room spray at 5%, particularly because it's going to come in contact with you and, you know, you probably, you know, will get some on your skin. I know a lot of people use room sprays, especially when they make it themselves, they'll spray themselves with it. So you want to make sure that, you know, dermal limit is in a safe range. So 5% for sure, I'm using 5% fragrance. And so far judging by the smell, it's actually really nice. Like it's quite strong. You only need a couple of um, sprays in the room to really fill the room up with the aroma. You don't really need to make uh, a lot because the supplier says room spray 1%. And I found the 1% is a little mild. I didn't really smell much of it. But I upped it to five and it seemed to be really nice. So I'm going to wait, I'm going to put everything in here and then I'm going to blend it with the stick blender and emulsify it very well. So I'm using grain alcohol today. I'm just wiping this because I washed it. And you don't have to use grain alcohol. You can just use for the liquid part of it or water but you absolutely have to preserve this because it is mostly water. It's not a liquid soap or a bar soap where it does not need preservative. You always preserve water-based products. Soaps out of the equation. Um, and the reason why is because bacteria and mold and fungus or any type of pathogens and you know, microbes can start to multiply in the container and when you spray that in the room, you can breathe it in and also you can get it on your skin that can really cause irritation. Um, it is a rare case, but when you apply a product onto the skin or um, even a moisturizer or, you know, room spray, whatever, and if it's full of bacteria and even if you get it on your skin, it can actually enter the bloodstream and give you sepsis. It is very dangerous to not preserve water-based products. So I will say that up front. And if you see videos that make water-based products and they don't add a preservative, do not follow that because that's wrong advice and it's very dangerous, especially to people that are elderly or kids or babies. And if you spray a room and they breathe that in, that can potentially be fatal. So you always preserve your product and that's the reason why I'm using 95% ethanol or sugarcane ethanol perfume grade so it's got a very low uh, odor but it's actually 95% alcohol and 5% water so it's very very strong and I'm using this at 30% so then that way we'll get 25% alcohol in our um uh, in the recipe and you want need minimum 20%. So if I add 30%, we can assume 5% of it is water because that's what the label says. It's minimum 95% alcohol, maximum 5% water. So we're going to assume the maximum values. Uh, so the maximum value is, of course, is 5% water. So adding 30%, we're getting 25% alcohol because we have to deduct 5%. And you need minimum 20% in a product of alcohol, it has to be 95%, vodka, witch hazel, all these things will not preserve your product because we're adding exceptionally large amounts of other stuff, especially water to it. So I decided to use alcohol because I have plenty of alcohol because I make um, hand sanitizers. And, but you don't have to use alcohol. You can just do the whole lick water portion of an all water and you can use 1% preservative. So you look at, there's stuff like Optifan and Liquid Germal Plus and a range of other uh, uh, preservatives. There are even natural ones. I've never played around with stuff like that. So I'm comfortable with using the alcohol. So I know that the product is absolutely safe and I'm not gonna have any issues with uh, microbes or any nasties growing in my product, whether it's, you know, for home use, doesn't matter, because you're going to be using it, you know, for yourself around the home, so you've got to make sure it's safe, 
and I've seen videos you know in the past as well of um, I'm just gonna put that aside I've seen videos of people making skincare um, <clears throat> like lotions or they'll you know make a balm which is mostly mostly oil based and they'll add water or aloe vera to it without preserving it and um, they were planning to sell it and that's the most dangerous thing you can absolutely do because after a few days it'll guaranteed be growing microbes and that's not something you want in your product whether you're selling it or um, you are making it you know for home use or to gift it as friends and especially if you're selling it if you sell that and someone gets sick and they die or they get injured or whatever the case is your insurance will not cover you because that's negligence so that's a whole area of course research everything yourself because it's um really important to have to make informed consent about you know how you're formulating your recipe and um with the preserve preservatives as well so it's always these are just a guideline i'm just giving general information i've never used preservatives before but i wouldn't be comfortable in making something like this and not at least using alcohol um, in the product to make sure it's safe to use right so now that we've got the preservation out of the way um i am going to mix everything up and of course the recipe will be in the description it's a really really straightforward recipe it's not difficult to make whatsoever so we're going to weigh out 62.5 percent water we're making 700 grams worth and remember again always weigh you don't go by volume you weigh every time doesn't matter what it is soap making cosmetics candle making whatever you know room spray whatever the case is you always go by weight right so we need 437 grams or 437.5 grams of water but i'm totally fine with i'm um, just upping it to 438 it's not going to harm anything half a gram of water it's not going to um harm anything at all so 438 so let's see 427 436 440 that's okay even three grams that's a very minuscule amount considering we're going to be adding 30 percent ethanol so we'll tear that so we need 210 grams of alcohol so i get the alcohol from um sydney solvents it's a sugar cane alcohol and it's an australian one as well which is great so we get 210 grams of that yep 210 perfect right so put that aside and then we need 35 grams of fragrance so as pointed out before i'm using australian bush from aroma beautiful smell very very nice mm. so i'm going to weigh out 35 grams so we'll do it nice and slow 35 grams 35 grams great and I've sprayed everything I'm using I've already sprayed with I have just pure alcohol in this spray bottle I got it from office works um, it's number five plastic so I just put pure alcohol in it and that's actually what I use when you see me make soap I use it to um, spray the top of my soap to prevent soda ash and um, I also use it to sanitize the equipment after I wash it with soapy water. So the next one we need, I have to look because it's a fairly new recipe, so I don't remember everything off by heart. So we need 17.5 grams of polysorbate. So we'll tear that. So 
So 17.5 grams. So we can just do 18, it's fine. And it will drip out, it's a bit thick. Right, yeah. Okay, that's done. And the reason why I use that metal chopstick with those fragments oil and the polysorbate is so it stops the dripping down the bottle. So it's actually really effective. I use it for essential oils too. Right, so I'm gonna stick blend it. It is going to foam up a little bit. We don't have to weigh anything else. Um, so I always start by, if you're using polysorbate 80, you will start by half. And if it, it's normal for it to go cloudy, it will clear up. If it doesn't clear up, two reasons why it doesn't. You need more polysorbate. And um, if it still doesn't clear up, even if after you add more, it's just the fragrances. Sometimes the fragrances don't clear up. And um, it's just gonna remain milky, which is totally fine. It's not gonna affect the product whatsoever. Um, it's totally safe to use, even if it stays milky. So with polysorbate 20, um, you do one-to-one -one ratio. So now you know how we weighed out 35 grams of um, the fragrance oil, then we do 35 grams of the um, polysorbate 20. And then if it, you just keep adding more, if it doesn't, if the milkiness doesn't go, um, that's assuming that the fragrance we're using doesn't actually cause a milky substance when you mix it all together. And I know I've seen on Aussie soap supplies, here in Australia, they actually have a natural solubilizer made from sugar. So I'm really keen to give that a try because if I am going to make room spray for Dawn Organics, the range, I am going to use um, that because it's completely natural and um, I can, you know, obviously couple it with natural fragrances and essential oils. So I'm really keen to try that. But at the moment, just having fun playing around. I like trying new stuff. So I'm going to give this a good blend. It is going to foam up a bit because um, I want to make sure everything is mixed uh, properly. And I'll show you how I fix the fizzy. Uh, so it did bubble up a little bit, actually, this fragrance, because I haven't used this fragrance, actually in um, room spray yet because I've only tried a couple of fragrances but um, this one didn't really bubble up as much so I guess it also depends on um, what fragrance you're using as well which is interesting because it really did bubble up but it still bubbled up a bit I'll show you so what I do like to kind of settle that I, again once again I get my alcohol and just spray it oops Give it a good spray on the top. Get a spatula. Just give it a good mix as well. I can hear it bubbling a little bit, which is normal. So if you hear it bubbling, that's totally fine. So I'm going to actually set this aside for about half an hour to an hour. And I'm going to put the lid on because it's got alcohol in it and we don't want it to evaporate. Because if it evaporates out and the volume of alcohol becomes less and we don't want that because we want our product to stay preserved. So what I do is I get the lid. This is just a mason jar I picked up from Target. I think it was like three or four dollars. And um, <clears throat> it's one litre. And um, of course, overall, we're making 700 grams because we, of course, weighed it, not by volume. So I'm just going to not do it tight. Just enough just to it's still loose just so that alcohol doesn't um, evaporate out and then it gives it time for this to clear up or well, if it's going to clear up we will see um, if not then we'll add a little bit more if it doesn't clear up um, we'll add more sorry the polysorbate 80 if it doesn't clear up and it's just that fragrance right um, and I'll probably because we added 2.5% polysorbate, I'll probably up it to 3%, give it a good mix. And if that doesn't work, then I'll up it to 4%. If that doesn't work, 
Um, I probably will try five because we're testing, so it's fine. I'm not selling this at all, it's just for home use. And if that still doesn't do it, then I know it's just the fragrance. And next time I'll just leave the polysorbent 80 at 20%, oh, 20%, at 2.5%. Right, so I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna go off and do some other stuff and we'll come back in about an hour. Right, so I just added another 2.5% polysorbate. I know I said I was only going to add half percent or one percent, but I thought I'd just go to full five and see if that clears it up. So I'm just going to give it another blend, stick blend, and then I'm going to let it sit for another hour and see how it goes. Right, so we're back and adding double didn't see, adding, sorry, not double, adding equal amounts polysorbate 80 to the fragrance all didn't make any difference, still cloudy. So it's just this fragrance, I know for sure, because I made a few days ago a batch of pure musk, that's from, also from Aroma, and um, that was clear, it was crystal clear. Um, so it just depends on the fragrance you're using. So I bought these, um, which are, it's probably a bit too big. I bought these bottles, which are very nice. They're spray bottles. So that's one. And also a nice spray bottles like these two. I got these from Kama. And um, these are really nice glass spray bottles I got from uh, Target. And quite inexpensive. So we'll see how much it fills. So again, I'm going to use a spoon to stop it from spilling everywhere. And just make sure it's mixed. Right, so um, adding double the, um, sorry, not double. Adding equal amounts of the polysorbate didn't actually change it. You can see the bottom as well, it's still milky. Um, I actually made um, pure musk the other day, and that's also from Aroma. And, um, and it, did, it was not cloudy, it went crystal clear. So it just depends on the fragrance you are using. And um, obviously the Australian bush just um, does like to stay re remain cloudy, but it doesn't affect um, the the product whatsoever. It'll still um, be beautiful and behave exceptionally well as a room spray. So if you do get a cloudy um, room spray, it's totally totally fine. It's no big deal, um, and it's still going to function as normal. So there you go. It's really that simple. It's not difficult at all to make a um, room spray. Um, I really, really, really like this. And I think I'm going to get the natural solubilizer version and have a go using, um, you know, those organic fragrance oils I have, like the Carnation and the Jasmine and all that. And of course, um, essential oils doing some nice blends. And I'll, I will do another video on that too, to show because the ratios of how much um, solubilizer you will need will be considerably different. Um, yeah, so this is great. Can't wait to actually go test it out. They're ready to use as soon as you bottle them up. They're absolutely fine to use. Um,
Right, so I thought I would update you. I went ahead and made some more, <laughs> but um, this time I did 2.5 to 1 and it seemed to clear up, which is great. So 5 times 2.5, that's how I worked it out, and um, it seemed to go clear. So what I'm going to do is, because I am a perfectionist, and I like things to be done the specific way, and I like things to be done right. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm sure you're gonna be laughing at me now, like, oh, George, it's fine. And it is fine. <laughs> but I want it to be perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna empty the previous patch I did <laughs> just before. I'm gonna empty it. And it hasn't separated. I mean, it's still fine, even if it's cloudy. But I just like things to be done a certain way. So I expect it to be clear. So I want it to be clear. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and fix this batch. So just, I guess each fragrance all, you know, obviously behaves different. Sometimes one to one will be fine or two to one will be fine. But this seems to, this particular fragrance likes 2.5 to 1. So we're going to go ahead and add 2.5, which now I have to work out. Because we did 35 grams of fragrance. So we're going to times that by 2.5, which is 87.5. And we already put 35, so 87.5 minus 35, so we need 52.5, because remember we made a 700 gram batch here. So now I've got to weigh 52.5. And if my calculations are correct, it should go clear pretty much straight away. So. We'll just weigh out 52, that five is not gonna really make a difference. 52. Okay, 52, perfect. And you're not imagining things, I do have a bend tag on myself now that I didn't have on before because I cut myself when I was doing the dishes. I didn't realize one of the casserole dishes um, was broken, chipped on the side. So of course I was washing it and, you know, moving the sponge around like that. And then I sliced a big chunk of meat off my thumb. So that was bleeding for a good half an hour. But um, now it seems to um, be okay. Stop bleeding, I cleaned it up. And um, <laughs> of course, happens to me. So as you can see, it is starting to clear up quite well, quite quick. I don't know if you can see, I'll pull it up to the camera. So it seems this fragrance likes 2.5 to 1. So I thought I'll just show, which is great because, you know, I am fairly new at making uh, room sprays. So because polysorbate 80 is much stronger than polysorbate 20. So if this needs 2.5 to 1, then I could assume polysorbate 20 needs maybe 4 or 5 to 1. Um, I have seen on descriptions of some suppliers like Aussie Soap Suppliers and Alien Body Care as well. They say start from one to one and then work your way up until you get a clear solution. So same with this, polysorbate 80. And actually they were the same price. So the reason why I got the polysorbate 80 was because I thought, okay, if it's stronger, more concentrated and I use less, then I don't need to use as much. And that way it'll keep the cost down as well. So that was just my, I don't know, I guess my business mind. Not that I'm selling these, but my business mind just, goes into, <laughs> I was going to say goes into overdrive, but I think it's just automatic for me at this point. 
And I thought, okay, well, I can use less of polysorbate 80, so then why not polysorbate 80? So, yeah, the assumption is 4.5 to 5 to 1, probably I would have needed of polysorbate 20. Um, so, yeah, this has cleared up actually quite nice. So, just a tad little cloudy, just a little bit. So, maybe I'll add just a tad more. See what happens. So not the whole lot, just a little bit, just to see. Yes, there we go. Now I can start to see through it. And from my understanding of polysorbate 80, um, you can use up to 50%, not that we're going to be using anywhere near. Uh, 50% <clears throat> but um, that's from what, what I've uh, been able to research like from the research I've done and the reading between 1 and 50 um, definitely not going to be using that, that amount um, for this recipe there we go that's clearing up really nice you can probably start to see through it now there we go so I didn't weigh that last little bit, so it's definitely under three to one. Um, I'm sure if I kept mixing it, then it would have been okay. But just to show you that adding just that little bit extra can actually make the room spray clearer. So there we go. That's the Australian bush, 2.5 to one. And it's cleared up very nice. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. It would have been fine cloudy, but you know, like I said, I am a perfectionist <laughs> and I want it to be, I want it to be a certain way. So I want it to be perfect. Um, let's put that there. Don't worry, the bench is sanitized already. I wiped it down before with alcohol, so that's not a problem. Now let's put these back in. So I assume if I use the um, natural solubilizer, I'd probably need five to one as well. So I'm really keen to try that. So next time I put in all what I would Aussie Camel supplies, because I do get some essential oils from there, like the lavenders and the rose geraniums, really good price there too, and fantastic quality. Um, I will actually be grabbing um, probably five kilos worth because I actually plan to use a lot of it. So, let's see how much I've put in there. In that case, still a bit of room. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> oh gosh, that's all right. I'll wipe it up. It's largely water, so it'll wipe up quite easy. Yes. Well, if I knew exactly how much weight goes into each, then um, I would have weighed it and then avoid spilling. <laughs> of course. And it wouldn't be the first time I've done something very silly like that. So. <laughs> Regardless, problem fixed. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to clean that mess up and I'll see you in a bit. Right, so we're back. All cleaned up now, thankfully. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to get the other bit that I made and put it in the grey bottle, spray bottle. There we go. Perfect. There we go. All done. I don't know if you can see inside. Well, not that you need to see inside anyway, because you've already seen it. But um, there we go. Australian bush spray. Room spray. Very nice. Fuel musk one is very nice too. 
So I look forward to really trying different um, scents in the future. And by all means, you don't have to use 5% uh, fragrance. You can use anywhere between one and five. It just depends on how strong you want it. But the content, if you are to follow this recipe, the um, alcohol content always stays at 30%. What you can adjust up or down is the water, and then you play around with um, the, you know, what you want to replace the water content with more fragrance, you know, or more polysorbate. And then obviously if you want to use more, then you reduce the water and you take the percentage away from this, not the alcohol. All right, so that's, I just thought I'd point that out. And even me adding that extra polysorbate that you see me add to get it clear, I added enough alcohol, that's why I did 30% as well, to still preserve, um, to be enough to preserve what I added. So it's totally fine. That's why it's really good to do 30 or even 35%, depending on what you want. But 30% is sufficient if it's 95% ethanol or you know perfume as alcohol and of course you know between 60 and 70 percent or 55 percent to 70 percent depending on um, the fragrance how much you want and how much polysorbate you need because every fragrance will behave differently some of them just will not go clear um, doesn't matter how much polysorbate you have but so far the pure musk and the australian bush from aroma um, seem to solubilize um, the Australian bush needed more, but it still so it still went clear. So I'm hoping you enjoyed today. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing, and we learned something new together today. Um, I thought I'll put it on camera um, to see me, you know, <laughs> make a fool of myself by spilling the <laughs> spilling the room spray all over the bench, and also a good learning experience because. Before our eyes, we've seen it go from cloudy to clear, so we know how to combat that issue. Right, so thanks so much for watching, and until next time, happy, uh, well, I usually say happy soaping, but today is not soap, so happy fragrance making, <laughs> room spray making, I don't know. <laughs> All right, take care, and see you next time. Bye for now.